You're listening to Fit Girl, your guide to getting in shape, the podcast dedicated to helping you separate fact from fiction in fitness. For more details about this podcast and other episodes, visit fitgirlpodcast.com. This is podcast episode number 298. In this episode, motivation, nutrition, and training all wrapped into one topic, how to avoid weight gain during stressful times. And I'm going to give you three simple tools to help you end stress eating. We're all under a lot of stress for different reasons, whether it's work or family, children, or just the daily emotional drain. There's always stress in our lives. Stress can be made better or worse by our nutrition, and our nutrition can also be the cause of our stress. They go hand in hand. Let's discuss this relationship. People will turn to food as a way to relieve stress by watching a movie with a pint of ice cream or munching while mindlessly working on something. But there's a big problem with that behavior. Subconsciously, it's getting your mind off the real stress or the real problem by creating an entirely new problem. What happens when you turn to food during stressful times and what people call stress eating, your mind actually creates a new problem for you to focus on in an attempt to get your mind off of that outside stress. Your subconscious is actually masking the true problem because it feels you're so accustomed to dealing and focusing on food in that way, it's pulling you into a comfort zone. Well, sure, it's got good intentions, but It only knows what you tell it. And when you start saying things like, I overeat when I'm stressed, I can't stop eating because I'm so stressed, your subconscious mind takes you literally and drives you toward that behavior, one that it's very familiar with and not that other scary, stressful thing that may be going on in your life right now. In this case, nutrition becomes a stronger stressor than anything else. Now, on the other hand, poor nutrition can stress your body and your brain and lead you to have cravings. You'll overeat because your body desperately wants nutrients and it's driving you to give it some. If you just grab some fast food, then your body's probably not going to get the nutrients it needs and it will continue to drive you to keep finding food to satisfy its requirements for energy, for your brain, and for all of your other daily functions. And this alone can be just as stressful on you and your body as any outside stress. We have two big issues here to uncover. Number one, food used as an escape to mask an outside stress, and number two, food causing stress due to lack of proper nutrients. I'm going to give you three tools to help you end this destructive behavior of stress eating. You can actually apply one or several of these tools to keep yourself as stress-free as possible, which is actually going to help you in several different ways with weight loss and reaching your fitness goals. So let's jump right into it. Here's what's happening. If you're eating the wrong foods or you're not eating the right foods or skipping meals, it's going to cause your body stress. And the stress can cause you to overeat or eat the wrong foods. And that becomes a vicious cycle because the lack of good nutrients can cause you to have cravings. And then you go right back to being stressed and that can cause you to overeat. And it's just like the diet cycle that you'll keep going around and around and around. But you can definitely break that cycle. And I'm going to give you some of these tools to use. Now, we know stress is damaging on many levels to your mind, to your emotional state, to your body, to your life. When you're turning to food as a way to relieve stress, three things are actually happening. The first thing is that you're masking the problem. You and your subconscious mind are so accustomed to dealing with dieting and thoughts of food that your comfort zone actually lies in the diet cycle. Your mind defaults back to the thing it does most, and that's eat, diet, and worry about that whole cycle. And you might not even realize it, but the diet cycle has become your comfort zone, a way to deflect new scary stress and focus on something that's familiar, which is your weight. Now, the second thing that's happening is you're also creating a new stressor. Turning to stress eating not only masks the true problem, it also creates a new one. If your body and brain are lacking the proper nutrition to function normally, then you are putting your body and brain under extreme stress. Improper nutrition, whether it's overeating or mindless eating or skipping meals, will make you feel tired and lethargic, and it's going to zap your motivation and make you cranky. It's going to zap your motivation and make you cranky. 
Number three, you're creating a new problem on top of it all. So on top of whatever problem you had to begin with that was stressing you out, now you have more problems of increased body fat, low energy levels, and the food issues. And it will feel overwhelming, like everything's coming down on you, and that's even more stress. So your instinct at this point is usually to diet, cut back on your food. You probably start thinking, I must eat less to lose weight, and that's wrong. And you also might be thinking, I better do hours of cardio to help my stress, and wrong again. But make sure if you haven't already watched the diet cycle video that you definitely put that on your list next because that'll explain a lot of that to you. Anyways, added weight on your body, well, also stresses your body. And when your body's stressed, your cortisol levels increase. And studies consistently show that increased cortisol contributes directly to belly fat. So basically, stress is going to make you gain weight and make you cranky. So now we have a new cycle. In addition to the diet cycle, we have the stress cycle where stress causes body fat. Body fat causes stress. And now we're back to stress again, causing body fat and just continuing over and over. It's important to know that food can also be used to relieve stress by keeping your blood sugar levels as stable as possible. When outside stress hits you, it's crucial for you to make the right food choices for meals and eat on a regular schedule. Just those two little things alone can lower your cortisol and help your body release fat for energy and keep your brain clear. You'll feel good, you'll have more energy to exercise and stay on track. This creates good habits that become a positive, productive cycle instead of a destructive one. That brings us to the first tool to help you end stress eating. The first tool is to plan. Remember, you're in control of food. It doesn't control you. So if you make a plan for your meals and a plan for sometimes when it gets off course, then you're gonna be in control of your food. And it doesn't take that long to plan. And when you think about your whole week, maybe even taking a half an hour to plan the entire week is a very small time to invest in how you're gonna feel and how your body's going to react. Now, your plan should be when you're going to eat, what you're going to eat. Always have a backup plan or what I call emergency foods. These are things that maybe like a protein bar or something that, you know, might not be your best choice, but at least it's something that has some valuable nutrition in it. Eating on a schedule is going to keep those blood sugar levels steady. And that is the number one way to reduce stress and to help your body let go of fat. When you teach your body to let go of fat by eating on a schedule, it's going to use it more efficiently, more effectively, and you will be burning body fat all the time. Your meals should be a proper combination of protein, carbs, and fibrous carbs and or vegetables. Same thing for snacks. Your brain will function better and so will your body on so many levels. You'll drop body fat, you'll have more energy, better recovery from workouts, and of course, reduced stress. Stress will always be part of our lives. Something comes up, something happens, you know, those are things not in your control, which is why you must control what you can control, and that is your food choices and your food intake. I know sometimes you don't have complete control over that, but you don't have to be perfect all the time with every single meal. You just need to make your best choices. And of course, even the best laid plans can go awry, which is why you have a backup plan. And that's to know which fast foods are decent choices. Do that by researching nutrition. They all have nutritional information for free. You can use that to know what your backup choices would be in case you're in a pinch. You know the saying, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Already knowing these choices beforehand can definitely keep you on track. Now I put everything you need to know about meal structure, meal timing, food combining, nutrients, and motivation and workouts in the 28-day makeover. And there's a link for that in the description below. And it's actually a 50% off link if you want to check that out. Now let's move on to tool number two. Make the conscious choice to avoid turning to food when you're stressed. Well, I know that sounds easy to do, but it's not always the easiest thing. So I'm going to give you two parts, which is two questions to ask yourself to help yourself avoid turning to food when you're stressed. The first is to say to yourself, is this a bodily need? Is my body telling me something that I'm missing? Am I missing some nutrient? Did I miss a meal? Did I miss a snack? Did I not have the right combinations of food in my last meal? How long ago was my last meal? Is my body lacking something nutritional that I need? And if you feel like you are craving something, 
ask yourself, am I craving this because my body needs something like salt or sugar? I mean, maybe you're craving something salty. Your body could be low in salt because you have done a lot of exercise and it's very hot outside and you're dehydrated. So your body needs a little extra salt. And if that's the case, choose something healthy like nuts. And if it's a sugar craving, maybe you haven't had a meal in quite a while, or maybe your last meal was a very small one. And if it is sugar, have something healthy like a fruit. If you take a moment to analyze these different cravings as something that might be lacking in your diet that you need to fill in order for your body and mind to function properly, then you will stay on track for your fitness goals and actually accelerate your results and be happy that you made the right choice. And that's going to help you make that same right choice again and again and again, creating that great new habit. Now, part two of this is if you can't find a solution for it in your craving, ask yourself, am I turning to food to ignore some other problem? And I know it's really hard to ask yourself that. So say to yourself, if I eat this, am I going to feel terrible about it afterwards? Is this going to create a new problem altogether? And this stuff is a huge leap out of your comfort zone, but it's going to make a big difference. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. The more times you start having a food craving and you stop and you say, wait a minute, am I lacking something in my diet? Did I miss a meal? What nutritional value does this give me if I eat this right now? And if that question didn't solve the problem, then ask yourself, am I trying to mask some other problem? If I eat this, am I going to feel terrible about it afterwards and create a whole new problem? It becomes easier each time you do it. And after a while, you won't even have to think about these two questions. You'll just know what's going on and then you'll either do one thing or the other and that's your next step. The third tool has to do with having a mantra being mindful and having a different perspective or maybe taking a different perspective on what's happening around you. When you feel the urge to stress eat, having a go-to phrase or a mantra can actually trigger you to get refocused on what you need to do. Use your mind to control your emotions. Stop, you take a deep breath and you figure out the source of your stress. Once you figure it out, you can take the steps needed to alleviate the problem or even adapt to relieve the stress. Your mantra is a key go-to phrase that can be any positive present tense statement, such as, I control my stress, I control my food, or simply, I am in control of my body. And that phrase can remind you to stop and think before you take action. It will also bring perspective to that moment. Are you reaching for food because you need it, or is it as a distraction? The best way to break a habit is to create a new good one in its place. Stop to reflect before you act. Another powerful phrase to ask yourself is, is this thing positive, productive, and going to move me closer to what I want most? Write that down and put it everywhere because that is something that can reverberate all through your head and it really is a powerful changer to your attitude and to what you're about to do next. And it's a very simple answer. If it's, yes, it's gonna get me closer to my goal, then great, you do it. If it's no, it's gonna get me farther away from my goals or no, it's not gonna get me closer to my goal, then you know exactly what you need to do. And if you get off track, don't worry, that can happen to the best of us. Just get right back on track, not next month, not next Monday, not tomorrow, but the very next minute, the next meal, the next decision, whatever it is, you start now. Remember, when it comes to eating, yes, you can start eating better right now, but it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to improve. And this applies to your exercise and your workouts too. You don't have to have the perfect workout all the time. You just have to move your body. Remember, exercise releases endorphins and that kills stress. So don't think of exercise in terms of weight loss. Think of exercise as a way to kill your stress and keep your body functioning optimally. If you don't move your body, it gets stiff and let's face it, your mind gets cranky. So a mantra for stressful times could be, I move my body to keep it healthy. It could be as simple as doing a few slow, mindful squats in the morning or a walk when you get home or your favorite YouTube video, maybe on the Fitness Makeover channel, or maybe join me for my epic fail video workout and you'll laugh at me and you'll instantly feel better. Another mantra could be, I get whatever exercise I can. Some exercise is better than none and gets me closer to my goal. So remember, positive, productive, present tense statement. That's what you want your mantra to be. And mindset training is by far 
the key to success in anything you do. Your mind is the key to getting control of your life for reaching goals and to handle stress. If you've never explored mindset and goal training, check out the 28-Day Makeover because there's an entire module on this topic. And of course, check the link so you can get the discount too. Now you have three powerful tools to use against stress. Awareness is half the battle and application is the second half of that battle. If you apply these tools consistently, then stress will no longer control you. You'll be in control of your life and you will get the results you want. Even though most of this was discussing stress eating, you can apply all of these principles to your workouts, to your mindset training or meditation type training, you know, things that are healthy and help you keep on track that sometimes go to the wayside when you're stressed. So your mantras can be not just for food, but it can be for your exercise. It just depends on which area tends to falter for you when you are stressed. Every little bit really does count. We don't reach a goal in one day or one week or one month. It's over a long period of time. And that's why it's so important to start changing bad habits into good habits because a habit is going to be whatever you repeat, whether it's good or bad. Make sure you're setting yourself up for success by creating constructive habits that support your goals. As always, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I look forward to giving you all the insights to help you reach all of your goals and to help you get your best body ever. For more details about this podcast and other episodes, visit fitgirlpodcast.com.